Sonia is the, the, the director of the film. His first film, Murder Party, had played at the Bloor a number of years ago, and it was fabulous to have it back. Um, and I got to see this film in Cannes in Director's Fortnight, and didn't know what to expect, because Murder Party is a horror comedy. Um, really a, a, a fun little film, and uh, surprised to see his next film in Director's Fortnight. And this was really one of the discoveries of, uh, of Cannes uh, this year. So I'm really pleased to be able to present it to you. Uh, Jeremy's just uh, running late from a uh, press duty today, but he will be back at the Q&A, and I urge you to stick around because we had a great time talking with him on stage. Uh, this is a very simple, ruthless film. And that's all I'm going to tell you. All right. But I will, of course, tell you that this film is eligible for the Blackberry People's Choice Award. If you liked it, let us know. Show your passion for film by voting the Blackberry People's Choice Awards. You can vote for as many films as you'd like. Just dump your ballot in the box outside the theater or register your ticket number online. We would like to thank Entertainment One and Radius, the Weinstein Company, for providing us with this film. Time to ride shotgun. Get ready for Blue Ruin. We'll see you soon. Oh no, don't, don't say oh dear. It's, it's good. You'll, you'll get through this. <laughs> see you soon. Hi, film fans. Okay, so this is my review of Blue Ruin, which I saw today. Uh, it's an American film directed by a guy named Jeremy Saulnier. And the lead actor in the movie was a guy who definitely should be noted. Uh, his name is Macon Blair, and he played a guy named Dwight. Uh, okay, so um, first of all, let me just summarize the plot for you. Sorry, let me get comfy here. Okay, so this guy Dwight is this uh, homeless-looking guy, vagrant-looking guy, very unkempt, very like long beard, scraggly hair. Looks like he hasn't had a, a bath in about ten weeks. And um, the very first scene of the movie, he's, uh, he's in the bath in somebody's house, and uh, here's a car drive up outside, and, you know, panics and, you know, runs out the door. Obviously, he's broken into this house so he can have a bath. So he takes off and gets away from there, and, you know, we see him rooting through garbage cans looking for food, and, um, and he sleeps in this, in this old uh, Pontiac Bonneville. Um, that's where he lives. It's like riddled with bullets, uh, really rough shape, looks terrible, uh, but that's his home. And, uh, so anyway, that's the first, like, I'd say, you know, 10 or 15 minutes of the movie, that sets him up, his character up. And so anyway, one, um, one night he's sleeping in his car. Next morning, this police officer drives up, knocks on the window, and says, I need you to come down to the police station with me. And so he goes with her. And, uh, and she says, uh, listen, uh, you know, you're not in any trouble, but I just wanted to let you know that they've released him and I wanted to warn you. And she slides this piece of paper across the desk at him or a newspaper or whatever. It turns out that uh, some guy who uh, murdered both his parents has been released from jail and she wanted to let him know about this. So um, anyway, as soon as he learns about this, he like snaps into action. He has made some kind of a decision. So. He, you know, gets in his car, uh, manages to get it going, gets some gas, puts the battery in, gets moving, and he heads to Virginia, where I guess this, this guy is in, is in jail or whatever, and um, goes into a pawn shop. He's looking at guns, but he hasn't got enough money to buy one, and, uh, but anyway, he, he ends up going outside the prison, waiting for the guy uh, to leave. I guess he found out like, the day he was going to be released, so he's waiting there in his car watching, and the guy's family and friends drive up to, you know, welcome him and his release from prison and he watches him get in the car, follows them to this bar or something, and uh, then he sneaks inside. This guy, by the way, was like the master of stealth, you know, like this guy would just like slink around and go around corners and, you know, open doors and peek in and nobody would ever like know he was there. This guy was like a master at like just kind of sneaking around. And um, so anyway, he sneaks into this like bar and he finds his way into the bathroom and he hears a couple of people coming so he like hurries up and gets into his stall and closes the door and it turns out that the guy, this killer guy who was released as one of the guys who comes into the bathroom and uh, <clears throat> he's left alone because he's washing his hands or whatever and that's when he sees his chance. Then we see this guy Dwight has a knife in his hand so he goes and he kills this guy, he stabs this guy, they get into a, like, a scuffle he, he emerges the victor, he kills this guy so his mission is accomplished and um, 
so anyway, the rest of the movie is just him uh, kind of dealing with this guy's family's wrath. Like, there's this, there was this, okay, so what happened was, oh boy, okay, the, his parents were killed because his father was having an affair with the, with the mother of this other family, and the father of that family got all jealous and pissed off and killed the father, ended up killing his mother also accidentally. Uh, so there's obviously like, you know, a lot of bad blood between these families, and then when they find out that this guy Dwight, you know, wait, you know, killed this guy, now they're after him and he's on the run, and, and he ends up going to, you know, talk to his old friend who sets him up with like some, a nice shotgun, and, um, so anyway, that's, that's the basic premise of the movie. <coughs> now, <coughs> I had heard somewhere, this, this movie got a review, and I actually posted it on my Facebook page saying that this was supposed to be, this particular critic said it was uh, <coughs> the greatest American movie of uh, in years or whatever. Uh, no, I would not agree with that. I mean, to sum up, this movie was like, okay. This movie started off a lot better in the first half. The first half of it was a lot better than the second half because the second half, this guy's like, he's, he's like, you know, going from place to place waiting in this guy's house for this family to show up, arming himself, like, I don't know, it just, it just, just kind of aimless to me. It didn't really, didn't really capture my attention. I really, really liked his character at the beginning of the movie when he was all scraggly and scruffy, uh, when he was like this homeless guy, like, I really, really, uh, enjoyed his character in that part of the movie, but that didn't last long enough. Like, that only lasted until he killed the guy in the washroom, and then as soon as that happened, he ended up breaking into another house and washing up and then he ends up shaving and getting all clean cut and cutting his hair so he looks like a, fi a friggin uh, you know uh, paper boy or something afterwards which really didn't work for me like I, I, I would have liked it if he would have stayed this homeless looking scraggly guy through the whole movie but when he changed his look the whole tone of the movie seemed to change also like when he was like this homeless scraggly guy kind of living on the edge it was like way more interesting and way more engaging but then when he when he like you know became this kinda like and he was a very quiet guy like even though there's a lot of violence in this movie and he committed a lot of violence even though it was like um, you know revenge violence or if you could call it um, justified violence if you could I mean if you're gonna if somebody kills somebody in your family and you kill them back some people would call that justified but, um, you know, kind of an eye for an eye kind of thing, but, um, yeah, like, as soon as he became this, like, clean-cut guy, the whole tone of the movie changed for me. Something shifted, and it just didn't work anymore, you know, and it's too bad. Uh, you know, it definitely wasn't a bad movie, uh, you know, it was, it was good. It was, oh, let me rephrase, it wasn't good, it was okay. Um, but it definitely wasn't great, and I was expecting a lot from this movie. Um, I don't know, I just, I had a feeling it was going to be really good, and it just didn't really meet my expectations. But the guy in the movie, the guy Macon Blair that I mentioned, he, he's definitely somebody to watch. Uh, I could see him becoming a pretty major character actor, uh, in the future, so... You know, he, I could see this guy in some Coen Brothers movies. He's, he's really got the, he's got the right look and he's got the right kind of, you know, feel as an actor, I think. Um, but yeah, it just, uh, kind of reminded me of like those 70s exploitation, uh, like Walking Tall, like that movie Walking Tall. Kind of reminded me, of that. not quite, but you know, in a sense that he's, like, he's a lone wolf on his own trying to get vengeance. Uh, you know, up against all these, like, you know, odds and up against all these other characters who are, you know, trying to get him and stuff. Um, yeah, it just, no, nah, it didn't, it didn't really work. It's too bad. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else I can say about this film other than that I was kind of disappointed and I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. So there's not really that much more I can say. Um, it's, pr I mean, would I recommend it? Uh... I don't know. If you're into, like, uh, sort of revenge movies or uh, movies about homeless guys, <laughs> homeless guys who get revenge, I don't know. Maybe you'd like it. I don't know. Uh, definitely wasn't a bad movie, but 
you know, I, I don't know. I, I can't really, I can't really give it a thumbs up. I'm going to have to give it one of these. Okay, so that's, that's really all I have to say about this one. I don't have a lot to say, really. Um, yeah. So, that's my review of Blue Ruin, and I'll see you guys later. Subscribe if you want to see more. There's quite a few more to come. I've got a busy day tomorrow. I'm seeing three tomorrow, so I don't know when the hell I'm going to find time to upload all this stuff. Uh, but I will get it up. So, anyway, I'll be back with my next review. Okay, thanks for watching, you guys. Bye.